Hey guys, it's San and welcome back to the Bulba Squad. So today I'm going to be talking about my percentage milestones. Some of you may have already heard this, it was imbued within another video, but I have realized when I reference them, I don't have an easy go-to video to just say, oh, go check this out. So that's what this video is going to be. If you guys have heard it, maybe this will be a great refresher. If you haven't, fantastic. It's a great learning opportunity. So percentage milestones is what I've dubbed them. Nice and simple. All it means is essentially set a percentage for how much you want to make in money and then that's when you sell and don't deviate from it that's the gist of it but we're gonna go more in depth with it first and foremost when you purchase products especially in Pokemon you should buy in bulk never try to buy individuals so here I did buy individuals but that's because I'm gonna break them I'm gonna open them up just for my own entertainment but evolving skies ETBs in this situation, I technically have more, so I could try and sell them off. It's a little more complicated here, so I'll actually go into the Pokemon Center exclusives and how you want to maybe treat those ETBs. But cases. We'll talk about cases. That's perfect. In a case, that's what you want to go for. You'll get cheaper prices than if you buy single booster boxes and you have more mobility. You have six boxes, which means theoretically six different price points you can sell at, depending on how you want to do this. Let's take my spider system, for example. I have some videos out there. Don't worry. I'm going to make one on Sword and Shield Base soon. That one I'm definitely going to cover. Look at the set. Get an idea. Okay, how fast was it appreciating? How much supply do I see out there? How is the intrinsic value looking? All these little factors along with get up idea of the price velocity. I'm just going to call it that. And for that, you'll decide, okay, what percentage gain do I want to sell at? So theoretically, let's talk about a uh, bid voltage. I'm going to use the situation that happened after Logan Paul. I purchased at $500 and then it went to like 140 within a month. Well, at that velocity, yes, it would tell me I should theoretically wait until it gets higher until I hit, let's, all right, let's say I purchased at $83. I believe that's what it is. It goes to $140. What's that? Around a 75% price appreciation? Logically, you would think, oh, I should wait until it doubles because that's what it looks like. But then we have to bring in other variables. Now we know it's very new in rotation, so the odds of a reprint are extremely high. So rationally, I should accept this gain, and it, because it's so above average, if we're talking about $140, well, right away, we're going to we're going to add tax. We're just going to make it 10 10 percent. So 154, then take away your eBay fees, shipping. And we're going to make this kind of like a nice even 130. OK, 130. You're still making about 50 bucks profit. So knowing that we're going to go ahead and sell two, three boxes. Why? Three boxes pretty much pays for two boxes at that point in time. Like I'm almost completely out of almost out of it. I have almost no money in it. I Then I have much more mobility. I can decide, okay, I've sold at this price, so I'm gonna go ahead, wait until it hits 160, 180, then I'll sell another one. Of course, this is very irrational. That's happened in 2020, but it went all the way up to $300. Then you would sell again. Then from there, you decide, okay, it's not slowing down 220, because at that point in time, on that fourth box, you're free. Like, those last two boxes are completely free. You have no skin in the game at this point in time. You can technically shift that bar upwards to be a little more ludicrous if you really want to. And if you hit it, congratulations, sell. And you still have that last box, so it still gives you some mobility. I use this with evolutions to an extent. It was really just me learning how to sell, but the concept was the same. It was just I was much more amateurish at the time. I put my box up at like 270, price went up, then I moved it again at around 330, price went up, I moved it around 390, and it just up and up and up we went, okay? That's how I used it. Obviously, you're going to miss the peaks. You're not going to make maximum money, all right? Especially using this method, because this method guarantees you're not going to get the highest price for your boxes every single time. Like, you're guaranteed that every single sale you make is probably not going to be as good as you would have liked it to be. Because that's the whole principle. Percentage milestones, as it appreciates further, you're selling more and more. 
So it means that first sale is going to be worth less than the second and worth less than the third. Don't get caught up on that. At the end of the day, you can buy back in, but you can never get that money back. I've said this before. So the percentage milestones are there to remove the emotion. Because I got emotional at one point. I got delusional with Vivid Voltage. I didn't sell at $300. There's no, re there's no reasonable explanation for it other than I got greedy. Percentage milestones help to dilute and alleviate that from the equation. So that way, you can keep going forward and making the money. Now, I want to use Hidden Fates. This is a much better example. Hidden Fates, right out the gate, went from $50, shot up to like $75. It just immediately, by the time we were in around, I believe it was May or June of 2020, Hidden Fates was almost $250. It was expensive. It was ridiculous. So in this situation, you know, okay, it's a specialty set. Supply inherently is lower than a standard set. And the velocity at which it's going is insane. So I'm not going to sell at $75. We, let's be honest, you won't be selling at that anyway because you're not making money. So I'm going to wait until $100. Okay. $100 is real easy math. Let's say after shipping and fees, you're going to get around... $87. You're still making $37 in profit. What is that? Uh, I believe that is $74, 74% profit. Fantastic. And then just keep selling along the way. And that's the beauty of if you decide to do this in rotation. If you do it in rotation, you can do it and decide, okay, I've made money. And then I can go ahead and buy back in cheaper if they reprint it it's going to help alleviate that risk because this should be coming out after my video on it's stupid to buy it release but if you're using this it's more work but you can technically make that work you understand me obviously there's still risk but this helps alleviate some of it because you're being more proactive and beyond rotation i think it's fantastic simply because again you're going to keep you're going to keep up with the market, understanding what's going on, stay educated, and you're going to be consistently bringing money in. Maybe not consistently to the point of it. once every six months, I'm going to sell. No, no. Maybe it'll be like once a year. And if you have a bunch of different items doing this, and they all keep hitting their milestones at various points, congratulations. You might be actually creating a steady stream to then re either reinvest into this hobby, put it into a traditional investment, or... Maybe you just use it. I, I don't think that's great, but you might want to do that. So that's where I see the percentage milestones really coming in to help. So that's all I got for you guys today. Tell me, what do you guys think about these percentage milestones? Do you think I did a good job explaining what they are, the way they're developed? I know it's not a completely new concept. I'm just kind of giving it a name and really making it concise and explaining it. And do you tell... Tell me, do you guys feel like I covered everything well enough? Do you still have questions at the end of this? If so, drop them down below in the comments. And you guys want to support us, $1 on Patreon. If not, subscribing is free. And if you really enjoyed the video, please consider liking. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.